Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation of Hard Grinds is brought to you by Alive, Bon for Bones, Burger King, Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store, Commonwealth Bank, Epic Battery, Grand Bahama News, Marcos Pizza, and Print Masters. The Foundation. Germany, enjoyed myself in Atlantic City, I've been to all of the great countries, now I'm living like a king down in Bimini, just talking about, singing about, no matter which part of the world I roam, little Nassau is my happy home, talking about, I'm singing about, no matter which part of the world I roam, is my happy home, I love the land, I love the fun, I love the taste of the bitter people of this country, but the young girls are more important to me. We're talking about singing about no matter which part of the world I roam. Little Nassau is my happy home. Talking about I'm singing about Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Point nine FM Radio. Howard Brandon, your company, The Foundation. Beautiful Monday. Deep in the thick of the summer, I hope you guys are good. I know you're squeezing your money together trying to figure out um, uh, where we can, Miami or right there, the course, right? We did. <laughs> Let's talk about these things, guys. It's a beautiful day. Grateful to be in your company as we're making these things happen. Check out my good, decent people over at AFS Insurance Agents and Brokers. They got everything laid out for you. I always tell you. It has become, uh, you know, second nature now to be able to tell you about all the great opportunities that exist as it relates to insurance over at AFS Insurance Agents and Brokers. They can now make sure you check them out. They can take very, very good care of you, especially if you get them kind of bulk SD plates, taxi, jet ski, livery, all those particular things. Make sure you go and check them out. They got insurance available for you. In-house financing. You can't beat that thing. In-house financing. So we're going to talk to them about a few things and see exactly what at 341-1-AFS, 341-1-AFS, number 407 Blue Hill Road South. They got everything laid out for you. They're good and decent people. 9 to 5 on the weekdays, 9 to 2 on Saturday. It's a great day, guys. I want to be, uh, you know, the first to kind of talk to you about something. Well, I don't know if I was the first. I didn't listen to all the shows this morning. Uh, but I know that there's a lot going on in the news. Make sure you pick up the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the government's $30 million tax demand on Sandals Resort chain uh, objected to the, the, DI, the DIR's assessment. A $100 million bond for energy grid upgrade oversubscribed. Uh, filling a uh, filing detail government's engagement with foreign consultants. This is bananas. Let's talk about it. And then suspects charged in a separate murders. Uh, we got to be as decent as possible as we continue to actually have these kind of conversations. Guys, it's a beautiful day. It is the government's payday. Don't loose like a goose. The children got to go back to school in August. Don't wild out and come back from the States with $5 in your pocket. 
You ain't paid a school fee yet. Let's be decent. Amen. I can't get no amen. You ain't paid a school fee yet. You forget to buy the skirt. Your baby girl got to wear the skirt from last year. <laughs> Let's be decent, guys. Let's be decent. Little children, you go on your work for summer. You make your little $500, $600, $700. I don't know how much you make from the government. You put that money aside. You want to go buy $150 pair of shoes. Wiling out. You ain't got none of your books for science yet. Well, I can never use science in my life, no how, but I can use these clocks. You need to stop it. <laughs> you, need to, <laughs> you need to stop it. Let's just be decent. Whatever understanding you have as it relates to financial literacy, teach that to your children. At least, I hope to God is a decency. Teach it to your children. My God, my son, the other day, listen to me. I got, I got stories to tell you about these children. I, I, you know, my mother said, oh, I thank Jesus. Oh, God, I give you praise that it's happening to him also because he did it to me. I, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe. I don't believe I did this to my mother, right? These children stressing me out. I can't take it. My God, if I was a man of a lesser conviction and strength, I might have been drive to drink, but I, I'm not going to drink, right? Unless it's this little bit of cocoa I got right here. <laughs> you all want it out. Guys, it's a beautiful day. Hoping that you have a good time in your summer. I'm uh, I hoping that some things are going well. I know, uh, you know, my wife said she went to pay the uh, light bill, and the line is crazy. She said, move fast. I suppose you're only around today. So let's be able to see exactly what's happening out there. And um, um, let's talk about these things. Guys, I want to talk about something that's happened over the weekend, uh, last week. And uh, I don't think we had, had an opportunity to be able to kind of touch it, but uh, it was sheer disgust for me. And I watched it and didn't necessarily know how the world would react. I know what I would have done, but I didn't know how the world would react. And just being able to, to observe it, just to be able to see it, and uh, sort of uh, understand the time and the dispensation that we're in, uh, knowing that we are in a time and an age of uh, relentless apologies and persons continuing to be able to genuflect to an idea uh, that there's a there, there's a notion that's being said that uh, we must amalgamate to the world's view. And I don't think that we've ever considered what that meant, right? And I think that this is a stark reality of what it means. Uh, over the weekend, you would have been able to see the opening of the Paris Olympics. And with the introduction of that, I, I saw a lot of persons uh, kind of put it up on their Facebook page. Uh, two conversations were happening at the same time. One locally overpowered the other. Uh, there was a conversation about how Team Bahamas did not look the part, right? As it relates to, uh, you know, presentation and whether or not you had the proper attire and so forth. That was, that was a, a part of the conversation, which I didn't think was relevant, not for me. And um, the second part was the, the opening, the opening act of, uh, of the Olympics and the theatrics associated with it and the pomp and pageantry, and that sort of a, a flamboyant, thats I think that's the appropriate word, the flamboyance uh, associated with uh, um, the opening, and this sort of de depiction of the Last Supper, right? A lot of persons are saying, no, Howard, it was in the Last Supper, we're reading all over Facebook and, and all these things, it was in the Last Supper and all these things like that, but it was a sort of a spit in the face, of uh, those that share in this religion. Now, uh, you know, almost 3 billion people from a global standpoint, are they believe in this Christianity. This is their religion. This is their faith. This is their commitment to Jesus Christ, to uh, Yahweh, to Elohim, to Jah, Jehovah, right? And uh, these religions, for the most part, just kind of looked at it and... Uh, you know, they scrunched their, 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 their foreheads and their eyebrows, and they looked at it with disdain, but they kept looking. Can I say this? They kept looking. They didn't stop. The 206 countries that were represented in this particular space, they kept looking, right? Uh, there were some protests. There were some agitation socially. Um, there was some agitation. There was an apology, a half-hearted, um, casual approach to apology. 
uh, specifically dedicated and directed towards those people who have this, I'm sorry for the Christians, we're sorry to the Christians that were offended. France was supposed to be a Christian nation. Um, um, you know, they participated in this. They allowed this to happen. They, they went from one practice to another practice and allowed this thing to happen. And they were willing to take the pushback. Now, today's show is going to be about conviction. Now, you often hear me say, and I just, I thought I would bring this to the forefront and uh, really push it out there to talk about what I mean by conviction. What I mean about standing for something. Now, there's a guy uh, on Facebook that he's well known. I can't remember his name right now. I have this clip. I'll tell you his name right after the break. But um, he, went, so he went out there. He said he's a Muslim. But he has grave respect, great respect for the Christian faith and Christian beliefs. And uh, we know that Muslims are, are those persons who are steadfast in their tradition and their convictions. If this is what they believe, they will die for that. And he started to agitate him and the group of men outside um, uh, the embassy in France. They started to agitate outside the embassy in France. I want you to hear a little bit of that right now. Andrew Tate, that's his name, Andrew Tate. Beliefs. If you have something in life and you don't stand up for it, it will not last. If you have a house, you don't maintain it, it will fall down. Business, you don't work, it's gone. Relationship, you don't take care of her, she'll leave you. It's the same with religion. If you Christians don't start standing up for things, when they mock you publicly and openly, you'll have no religion left. It doesn't matter, it's a matter of time. Especially now, Romania and all these other countries have opened the border. Millions of people who come here are not Christian. And if you don't say, this is a Christian country and we respect Christianity, they won't respect it either. It's the end. And it's the man's job. The men have to stand up and fight against these things. When they try this crap again, I expect to see you all at the next embassy, wherever it is. Thank you, guys. This was heavy. This was heavy, and if you know him, he's on normally on the podcast Fresh and Fit. And always, not necessarily degrading women, but always being able to stand for conviction and saying that these women, these particular young women, don't have substance. So he's always been a man that spoke from his conviction. Not necessarily in the language that Christianity requires, not in the language that is pleasant and pleasing, always uh, sometimes using, uh, you know, defamatory words and so forth and so on, but he's always stayed, stayed steadfast in this position. I was intrigued when I saw him uh, take on this kind of a strong position and speak not on behalf of the Muslims, <laughs> not on behalf of the Muslims, because, you know, the world wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare insult uh, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, they wouldn't dare. They would not dare touch these particular things. But Christianity is a free fall. Let's uh, laugh up in the face of God and this particular religion. These people are crazy. They listen to this Bible. This man is a, his God is a crazy God. He's never been a God of love. He's a God of wrath, so forth and so on. So they continue to kind of poke fun at it. And the world is taking on this position. This same faith, this religion, this concept and idea is enshrined in the new world, in the constitution of the new world, with a very clear understanding that there is a path that should be followed in this space. And so as I look at this, the first thing I do is think about my country. And I think about, well, why are you all still to the Olympics? That's the first thing I think. This is Howard. Oh, Howard, please. We need to be represented for what? For what? For what? To be counted amongst the men? To be counted amongst the heathens? Come on, talk to me. I can't even get no amen. To be counted among these men and women that stand for absolutely nothing? What you still there for? They already ain't giving you no air condition. My God, you can sweat to death. They give you 300,000 condoms, no air condition, and a, and a bed that is made out of cardboard. These people are disrespectful. Talk to me. That's what you want to be. Just to be able to prove to somebody that you could run fast. That's what you want to do. This is the pinnacle of representation, even when they spit in the face of your God, of your faith, of your belief. The God that you are praying to, asking him, please, Jesus, let me win this race. Let me go in strong. Jesus, let me be energized. Is the same Jesus who ain't even there. He's been rejected at the onset. He is not welcome in this place. But you're there. You're there. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs ain't say nothing. Talk to me. The Olympic Committee uh, and those particular persons on Team Bahamas, no, ain't nobody say nothing about it. I ain't nobody say nothing, right? There are persons there who have faith and carry this faith on their back as a cross on a day-to-day -day basis that are representing right now for the country. That ain't nobody say nothing about that. There was more controversy associated with who should have gone and shouldn't gone and who is going to be, um, uh, you know, just like a token person going off as opposed to being able to have a convicted position about whether or not this is something we should participate in. 206 nations, nations, 300 billion Christians, faith believers and carrying the word of God in their hearts and on their lips. Look at this and ain't nobody say nothing. This is where we've come to in this life. This is where we've come to. That if a Muslim got to stand up for a Christian, all is lost. Let's be decent as we have this conversation. I just want to talk about not just the aesthetics, I want to talk about the implication. Because many times our transition shifting in preparation to step into this glory and the victory that we seek is at the cusp, but before we get to that, there's a test. The question that I have is whether or not this is our test. Is this our test as a nation? Is this our test as a body that have then carry this conviction? Is this our test to get to a position of growth and development? Or whether or not we are identified amongst the heathen? Let's talk about these things. I want to be decent as I have this conversation with you guys today. Please give me a call, 323-6232, 325-4316, 325-4259, anywhere for the family violence, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. Uh, let me take this quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen, and be right back after this. Celebrate Independence the BK way with our new Independence King Combo. Choose from our classic flame grill beef version or indulge in a crispy chicken breast topped with savory bacon, arugula, crisp onion rings, cheese, and our special tropical sauce. Both come with fries and a drink for a flavor sensation perfect for celebrating every year. Remember to top off your Independence King Combo with a delicious guava sundae or the new guava ice shaker. Available only at Burger King Nassau. Looking for great device deals and offers this summer? Look no further! Alive has special discounts on the latest smartphones, ring devices, and accessories. Plus, as an Alive customer, you can expect exclusive Get Extra offers and rewards, which means even more value for your money. We're talking more data, prizes, and surprises. Upgrade with us and experience the perfect summer with Alive in-store or at BeAlive.com forward slash deal. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Parents, it's that sweet time of year again. Hi, what are you talking about? Christmas yet? The kids are going back to school. So pick up your copy of the Nassau Guardian's Back to School Supplement, because it's the most wonderful time of the year. Put your students in the latest styles at the lowest prices, because Summer break is almost over, and our back to school supplement is filled with brand name back to school supplies at discounted prices, store locations, hours, and contact details. It's the happiest season of all. Advertisers, call the NASA Guardian today at 302 2300 or call your account executive to get in on the two insertion deal. If it's uniforms, shoes, books, backpacks, calculators, art supplies, laptops, tablets, or whatever is on your back-to-school supply list, your ad should be in the Nassau Guardian's back-to-school supplement. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Do you have uncontrollable debt? Are you ready to make that move to Fidelity for a stress-free future? These loans have a built-in savings plan that pays you unbeatable interest. 
ask about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Fidelity, we're good for you. It's getting hot in Marco's, and we're bringing the heat straight to your doorstep. We're giving you a fiery food experience like never before. For a limited time only, try our new sizzling fiery flavors featuring Reaper cheese on our fiery pizzolis, pizza, cheesy bread, and pizza bowls. Can you handle it? Taste the heat and order one now at MarcosPizzaBahamas.com. Now let me see now. Three two six E T I C. Hello, hello. This this epic e- epic battery. This Miss Bueller from round the corner. I hear you are selling tires now on Wolf Road too. Praise the Lord. It's about time. I live Fox Hill and Fire Trail. It's too far. That ain't all. They open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Sunday and holiday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. My brother Sam, he's a hacker. And he could go right there and get fixer. Call us at 326 Epic. We ship also to the family island. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk. The foundation. 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 And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, 323-622-3235-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. We're here, we're live, we're being able to talk about these things, and I just want to talk. I don't want to talk about what is a stark reality, right? What is sort of an idea that exists in this particular space. I don't want to talk to you about what existed on the surface. I want to talk to you about implications, the cause and effect, okay? The cause of being able to take on this such a very strong position uh, in front of the entire world, right, and losing a million, over one million tickets weren't sold. Over one million tickets weren't sold. As a result of it, right? People are offended. These are a bunch of Catholic people. These people are offended, right? And uh, over one million tickets weren't sold. There is sort of a relentless uh, apologetic posture online that actually states that, yeah, well, it's not really so. And this sort of depiction existed even prior to Christianity and not because it was painted in this particular form. This was a popular style of painting for the entire time. And this is not what it seems to be, and it wasn't the Last Supper, and blah, blah, blah. I don't even understand what you're saying. I don't. Because it didn't have to be that. It didn't have to be anything that mimicked anyone's faith, anyone's conviction. We don't even subscribe to Buddhism, to to this sort of a Hindu faith. We don't subscribe to any of those things, but we dare not spit in the face of what you believe and what you honor. That's just, that's just common courtesy. That's just common courtesy among men. We don't get in your business. That's not what we're here to do. We're not here to offend you. If anything, we're supposed to be the light, to draw you in and ask questions for growth, development, and a specific path that things could be able to happen. I just want to be as decent as possible as I say this. And have a very clear conversation about our responsibility, our posture, and our position to move in a particular direction. I just want to be decent. I had a drag queen. Overweight, my God. Overweight drag queen. Sitting in the stead of where, and centered in the middle of this thing, of where we would have seen the images. 
you know, man's construction and concept and idea of what they believe that the Last Supper was. Now, we don't have to get into whether or not Jesus was white, whether or not he was black, if he was pale, if he had straight hair, did he permit, was he relaxed? Oh, his hair is supposed to be woolly, his, bra- his feet was like brass, and so forth and so on. This was a representation that we've acknowledged for centuries. This is a representation of what we believe to be the Last Supper. And it may not be the specific persons. It may not be a true living representation of what God is or who God is, the actual picture. But it's a representation of our faith. And all of us, your grandmother had that picture somewhere in our house. Somewhere. Somewhere in our house she had something like this. And so we knew what it was. We knew the religious implications associated with it. Why desecrate that? Why? From an official, elevated standpoint to the entire world, you did this. And then you bring the fourth horseman out, which is the horse of death. My God, I just get preachy. You bring these things out. And so as we look at it and the representation thereof, we have to ask ourselves questions. What is these guys really trying to do here? Um, hopefully by the next hour, I'm going to be able to bring my good friend, um, Ambassador Devin Roll. He is uh, two steps away from me, Ambassador Devin Roll. He's going to be here to have a good conversation with me and really be able to chart down these things. But I want to just kind of talk. I just want to talk with you guys to find out what was your reaction when you saw it? Did you know that that the hour hour, this is the day and time that we're in right now? This is the dispensation. This is the expectation. These are what things is. Ain't nothing to surprise me no more. Or how I was absolutely appalled. I didn't understand. That ain't even my point. My point is, is that let people do whatever they want to do. You all could turn upside down from the ceiling with thorns on your head. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't going to be here. I leave it. You ought to be upside down on one upside down cross with thorns on your head and the Bible upside down. And that ain't my business what you all decide to do. I am not participating in that. Me, not me. Not me. Oh, well, Howard, it's bigger than that. Uh, us being able to win a gold medal is a great thing in our country. It'll be recognized amongst the heathen. Among these people who've already spit in the face of your faith? Or have you put aside your faith to ensure that you can align yourself with the world? My God, let's talk about this. I got to get a clearer understanding of what y'all was thinking. Donald Thomas, uh, my, uh, he's my neighbor in Barak. He's my cousin's cousin. He and my family. He's my cousin's cousin. And, uh, it was bigger conversations from the Bahamas about the fact that he would be the team captain or the team lead. Uh, five-time Olympian, Donald, Donald Thomas, uh, to be the team lead. And I thought about that, and I'm very happy for him. He from Ape Maroc. I'm very happy for him. But I saw nothing here that indicate that you even considered you even considered whether or not you should bother with this. But what you want us to do, Howard, step back? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you would do. I know what I would do. Next flight, gone. Bye. You could even see that it's a tumultuous time. That they had arsenic or some sort of, I don't know what they had, some sort of issue with the, with the, the trains. I think one person lost his life. So much things is happening. And we look at this and no one says nothing. No one, from an official standpoint, those particular persons attached to these, are we still convinced that we have to align ourselves with the worldviews? That means we have to shave ourselves of our convictions. That means that we have to forget our position. That means we have to reject um, uh, our minuscule position of conviction and standing strong and take on a warped concept of what life can be from the masses. 
This is bananas. Let me take this quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. Be right back after this. The foundation. The foundation. Now let me see now. Three two six E P I C. Hello, hello. This this epic Eckett battery. This Miss Bueller from round the corner. I hear you are selling tires now on Wolf Road too. Praise the Lord. It's about time. I live Fox Hill and Fire Trail. It's too far. That ain't all. They open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Sunday and holiday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. My brother Sam, he's a hacker and he could go right there and get fixed up. Call us at 326 Epic. We ship also to the family island. <laughs> Do you have uncontrollable debt? Are you ready to make that move to Fidelity for a stress-free future? These loans have a built-in savings plan that pays you unbeatable interest. Ask about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Fidelity, we're good for you. It's getting hot in Marco's, and we're bringing the heat straight to your doorstep. We're giving you a fiery food experience like never before. For a limited time only, try our new sizzling fiery flavors featuring Reaper cheese on our fiery pizzolis, pizzas, cheesy bread, and pizza bowls. Can you handle it? Taste the heat and order one now at MarcosPizzaBahamas.com. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Parents, it's that sweet time of year again. Oh, what are you talking about me, Christmas yet? The kids are going back to school. So pick up your copy of the Nassau Guardian's Back to School Supplement, because it's the most wonderful time of the year. Put your students in the latest styles at the lowest prices, because Summer break is almost over, and our back to school supplement is filled with brand name back to school supplies at discounted prices, store locations, hours, and contact details. It's the happiest season of all. Advertisers, call the NASA Guardian today at 302 2300 or call your account executive to get in on the two insertion deal. If it's uniforms, shoes, books, backpacks, calculators, art supplies, laptops, tablets, or whatever is on your back-to-school supply list, your ad should be in the Nassau Guardian's back-to-school supplement. It's the most wonderful time of the year. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant in your company, the foundation. Live and in full effect on this beautiful, beautiful uh, Monday. I'm grateful to be in your company. Just being able to talk the way that we are about what's happening out here, man. I'm seeing some things. I'm seeing some things out here, and uh, it's peculiar to me. It's just peculiar to me. I want to read a couple of your texts. Uh, the lines are wide open if you want to be able to call in. Uh, I want to read a couple of his texts. He says, uh, Howard, he's always degrading women. And uh, please, find a better reference because... Fresh and fit is subpar. One of them got a woman pregnant and suggested that she may have aborted it. It's a text is coming through. It says, but it was definitely the last supper, and it was definitely offensive. This is a text is coming through. Let's see if we can read a couple more. So it says, Howard, great show. I always try to respect the LGBTQ people. I must say I am really getting angry at these LGBTQ crew now that they're doing these disrespectful things to Christians and the faith. They would never try these things to Muslims because they know it will be a vibe. Now you see why they get pushback. This uh, text is coming through. It says, Howard. Hi, Howard. On uh, the cannabis for Rastafari issue, I asked last week, will the government legalize polygamy? 
because it is practiced by Mormons. And I believe that Islam as well. I noted, we should tolerate other religions and respect Christians' values, but we should not go out of our way to facilitate them. As a nation, we should only promote the Christian religion. Islamic nations only promote Islam. A talk radio host didn't agree with this. With this. Uh, how do you see it? Um, if you look around nations, uh, even within the preamble of our constitution, even in the posture and position of being able to understand these things, uh, we understand that we, are, we hold our Christian values, but as we dive deeper into this, we understand that you have the freedom of religion. You have the freedom of rights to choose, to speak, to do these particular things. We as a nation do have Rastas in our nation. We have Islam, we have Buddha, we have all these particular persons, right? We have all these religions, all these concepts, all these ideas, spirituality, all these things, voodoo, whatever you would call it. They exist within the space and the confines of our nation. But what the banner of this nation is, is Christianity. What the officials should carry to the other nations to say that this is what we stand for is Christianity. What the temperament and that tenor that should always be carried for the nation is, is Christianity. That's it. Out of our faith, out of our posture, out of our position, out of our determination to kind of move forward, we have a responsibility to adhere to our faith, our convictions and stand. That's my position. Now, I'm not here to be able to, you know, counteract, condescend, being able to speak down to anybody else's religion. That would be silly of me. That's immature, and that's not the position that we hold. But it's very important that we always amplify and show what we believe in. Now, if we're going to be wishy-washy and jellyback as people, if our leadership is going to be wishy-washy and jellyback and not being able to stand for something, there is no expectation. There is no expectation that when all these things come down, that there will be a shift for us to be able to move up. I just want to be able to say that and say it in decency and in order, right? My guest just walked in. I'm very grateful, my, my brother, that you're here. Let's talk about these things. Let me see if I can read a couple more of these texts. So it says, I'm curious. Let's read it. It says, Howard, first, first you have to ask yourself, who are we? There's a question that's coming through. I would find it laughable for a country that legalized gambling, smoking marijuana, and last week I believe I heard someone talk about allowing young women to make money from selling sex. For that country to then be offended that someone insulted Jesus. Right? And then he asked me, so Howard, did Jesus wear a relaxer? I don't know. These people just draw all kinds of things. Right? But we know what the representation of these particular things were. This is, I'm curious. What was the theme of the presentation was it an attempt at humor for example monty python uh used its uh, humorous religious script uh, listen for me for me this ain't nothing to play with i don't i don't see nothing joke laughable and funny in these particular things right it's sometimes that the characters typically do uh they do resonate with the french people i recall i sent a uh, dazzling dazzy a product a, a a, um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I recall I sent Dazzling Dazzy a portrayal of a drunk character to perform a guitar. I, didn't I don't support the portrayals, but I'd like to know why they put this in a script. I remember a couple years back, there was uh, these guys who draw in the newspaper. Oh, God. I, I, oh, God. I can get the information right now. There's the guys who draw in the newspaper. He drew something that actually spoke against the Honorable Muhammad, right, in their particular country. They murdered him. They murdered him. He actually went on the run. They found him. And I think, if I, could be, if I recall correctly, they absolutely murdered him. The entire country went crazy. This was an acclaimed person in the newspaper that spoke, that, that actually drew the, the, you know, in the newspaper it used to have this kind of a thing in the back there with the, the, um, the, the cartoon characters and the characteristics and so forth and so on in the back of the newspaper around the funnies, he did something that actually poked fun at their religion. They got rid of this guy. 
But we as Christians, we're very passive. And Jesus, well, Jesus will understand. He told us to, he told us to turn the other cheek. Jesus will understand. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to you as my very good guest who's here in the last couple of minutes of the show before we get out to for the one o'clock. Uh, my very good friend who's here with us, none other than Ambassador Devin Rule. My brother, what's happening with you? Howard, all is well. I trust that everyone is doing well who's under the sound of our voice. Uh, good to be with you as always. I just wanted to talk with you today, talking more specifically about what we've seen um, with the opening of uh, the Paris Olympics and sort of this depiction. A lot of persons that take on this kind of position to indicate that it really wasn't had nothing to do with Jesus and it was the parody and this and that and all these. It didn't have anything to do with this. What is your take on what you've seen come uh, come from there? <sighs> okay, so I, I, <laughs> I didn't watch the opening live. And ironically, I had a crazy weekend just last night because I heard so much talk about um, insulting the Last Supper scenery. I said, let me watch this ceremony. So I watched it, and whoa, the amount of apocalyptic scenery um, in terms of some of the stuff that Revelation points to, the rider on the pale horse, um, death. Um, the flags following behind it. Um, did you see the wings? Yeah, yeah, did I did I did saw the bull the, the bull heads as well. You saw the bull head. Um, then, then we see the scene with the. I didn't know at first that it was transgenders. We see the transgenders set up like the in the form. Are they transgenders or they drag? I just thought they were just drag. Or, or, transgender I, I, is actually a transition of gender. Um, so I don't know whether or not they were transgender I, I, I or may drag. Be, I may be quoting somebody who said it wrong then. I, I thought they said transgenders. They may just be drag. It mm -hmm. could be drag. Um, so their portrayal uh, would appear to be a remake of the Last Supper scenery. Um, and I was like, what is this? And then, of course, it, it climaxes with uh, Celine, who I was surprised to see there. She couldn't sing three weeks ago. Yeah, um, but she... she Got the strength to sing um, for the it's opening. Heavy. It's heavy what's happening. Um, and I'm very concerned for Celine because I was concerned for her for quite a while, actually, because when she um, did this, what I considered very dark commercial with the children. Did you see the endorsement? She's a part of that company. <sighs> I, I'm still heartbroken over the Celine situation. I, I thought she was one of the purest secular artists out there, um, but... Apparently not. Um, Howard, so, so my take on what was done, I think the world has caused to open its eyes and ask itself, are, are we watching some global scheme that's, that's just intent on... This might just be the introduction. This be, might be the introduction. Be, Listen to be. me. We can get in a deep conversation so, so, after this break. So, somebody asked Snoop, why, why were you so excited to be a part of the Olympics? He said, man, do you know this? This is one of the only events where the entire world has representation and the entire eyes of the world is watching it. So what was done is bigger than people think. Mm -hmm. It was huge. And, and we should talk about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when we get back, I want to be able to talk uh, even further about this because if we're going to start to have this kind of a conversation about the sign and the signs at the time mm -hmm. that uh, the Olympic was not afraid to kind of show us that exists within Revelations, we should take uh, a very clear indication and a look at what's happening from a, from a local mm -hmm. uh, and a geopolitical standpoint with Biden stepping back, with the assassination attempt for Donald Trump, with being able to understand that there is a shift happening. Mm -hmm with um, uh, a clear path, in my view, let's be decent, in my view, a clear path for Kamala Harris to the White House, this is going to be bananas. If, if we go there, we have to talk about this notion of a global reset. Let's do it. Well, and, and what that means. Let's do it. Yeah. Guys, I gotta take this commercial break and be able to get to news and be right back after this. <laughs> The foundation. 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 
This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is the Afternoon Report on the Guardian News Network. Hello, everyone. I'm Blake Tude. Thanks for tuning in. Topping news. Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell is defending the Memorandum of Understanding that two umbrella unions signed with the PLP while the party was in opposition back in 2021. Last week, Trade Union Congress President Obi Ferguson said the government has failed to adhere to the MOU. However, Mitchell insisted Bahamian workers have already benefited from that document. The Memorandum of Understanding signed between the PLP and certain trade unions before the general election is a valuable document. It was and is an inspirational and aspirational document on the way forward for labor labor relations in the country. The outcome of the document is that the interests of labor in the country have been advanced. Every worker in today's Bahamas has benefited from the signing of that document. Every worker today is, with few exceptions, better off than they were four years ago. Four years ago, the economy, as you know, was completely shut down and you couldn't work. The minimum wage has since been increased. On Friday, Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson said those unions allowed themselves to be used as pawns. Two men died in separate traffic accidents on Sunday. The most recent incident happened around 7 last night as a white Honda Accord and a black Suzuki Swift were traveling north along Western Road. Police say the male driver of the Suzuki Swift attempted to turn east onto Nelson Road when the female driver of the Honda Accord attempted to overtake, resulting in the two cars colliding. The female driver, believed to be in her 60s, was rushed to hospital with serious injuries while the male driver succumbed to his injuries on on the scene. He's believed to be in his 20s. Earlier that day, a 31-year-old man died when the black Yamaha motorcycle he was riding lost control and crashed into the wall of a home on Infant View Road. The accident happened around 1 a.m. Sunday. The motorcyclist died in hospital around 3 p.m. With no definitive information to go on, leaders of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union are predicting that as many as 400 Bahamas Power and Light workers could be seconded to a new company formed as part of the government's energy reform deal. Union President Kyle Wilson addressed their ongoing uncertainty when he appeared as a guest on Guardian Radio talk show Morning Blend with host Dwight Strawn. Basically, if you give them 60% control of the entire transmission distribution network, you're talking about the entire distribution staff. That could be as high as possibly maybe 300 people. Three to 400. Maybe 3 to 400 people because BPL's major brunt of the staff is the distribution and transmission staff. And so that even encompasses our transport services. And so when the transportation fleet and fleet services see all these trucks and they're saying, well, what is our future in transport? What is our future in fleet services? Right. How, where's that, what, what's happening for us? Government has entered into a 25-year contract with Pike Corporation for the upgrade and management of BPL's electrical transmission and distribution network. Bahamas Grid Company, a special purpose vehicle, will hire the new Providence TND employees at BPL for a period of one year. After that, they will have the opportunity to remain with Bahamas Grid or return to BPL. Wilson says this part of the private placement memorandum raises further questions. What? what am I returning to? What am I returning to? I mean, it's so obvious. Uh, I mean, Jesus. Union leaders have repeatedly said they are still in the dark about impending changes at BPL. Wilson said they are not opposed to necessary upgrades at the company. However, they have an issue with the way the government is going about it. Union Vice President Antonio Dean encouraged Pike Corporation to speak with union leaders. 319 new teachers will join the public education system when schools reopen in September. This was welcome news to Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson, who said 45 of those teachers are from Cuba. The Bahamas Union of Teachers, we did have one of our executive officers who went on the recruitment exercise this year to Cuba so they do speak English and I also um, had a courtesy call and a meeting with the Cuban ambassador that was excellent so we plan to work hand in hand we want to make sure 
that going forward, all of the Cuban teachers that come will be proficient in English, and we welcome them. Wilson said she is also awaiting the list of 100 teachers' aides. And that'll do it for us here on the Guardian News Network. Once again, I'm Vonnie to Stay with us. AP Update is coming up. Looking for a car that combines reliability, innovation, and options to fit every type of driver? Look no further than Toyota. Whether you're in the market for a fuel-efficient gasoline engine, a cutting-edge hybrid, or a fully electric vehicle, Toyota has you covered. Known for their unparalleled reliability, Toyota vehicles are built to last. From the versatile RAV4 to the eco-friendly Yaris and the all-electric BZ4X, there's a perfect Toyota for every lifestyle. Choose Toyota, the brand that drives you forward. Visit Executive Motors today, located East Shirley Street, a part of the Auto Mall Group, or call 242-397-1770. Toyota, let's go places. I'm Jackie Quinn with an AP News Minute. The FBI says former President Trump agreed to be interviewed about the assassination attempt this month at a Pennsylvania rally. Special agent in charge, Kevin Rojack. We want to get his perspective on what he observes, so just like any other witness. He also says the 20-year-old gunman who was killed at the scene had researched mass shootings and political assassinations. President Biden flies to Texas later today to honor the late President Lyndon Johnson, who signed the Civil Rights Act into law 60 years ago. Vice President Kamala Harris, now running for president, released a taped statement opposing Iowa's six-week abortion ban, which took effect today. One in three women of reproductive age in America lives in a state with a Trump abortion ban. The Chico, California man accused of sparking the massive park fire with a burning car is due in court. The stock market up and down today. I'm Jackie Quinn. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The foundation. 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 And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company, the foundation live and in full effect. We're being able to do all that we can, having a great conversation, guys. Starting off the top of the, the, the hour, really being able to talk about what you've seen come out of Paris with the introduction of these particular things and started to talk about sort of uh, the apocalyptic implications thereof and whether or not we are just some crazy radical Christians being able to take on this position and we need to go and sit down somewhere or whether or not this is significant for you uh, and being able to see that there's an agenda afoot that's being pushed to ensure that uh, the voices of reason the voices that stand for a specific standard are muffled and suppressed. Let's talk about that. I'm here joined in studio with none other than my very good friend, Ambassador Devin Rohl. Devin Rohl being able to talk to us about these things. My brother, what's happening with you? Say good afternoon to the people out there. Good afternoon. It's good to be back to Guiding Radio with my good friend, Howard Grant, who always uh, challenges the status quo, challenges your, your average thinking. Um, and I love it. And the thing about it is, it's always also kingdom base. If you don't, if you haven't heard him before, um, get ready to be challenged and blessed at the same time. Praise God! I appreciate you, man. I really do yeah. appreciate those sentiments. Now, but I want to know from you. I want to know about these things. Now, we watched it. We, uh, if you guys are just <coughs> tuning in, we started to talk about the implications that we've seen from uh, the Paris Olympics, uh, the the implications of the Last Supper 
the uh, pale horse and death riding in on the pale horse, mm-hmm. uh, being able to see the the bull, the calf, that we would have been, been able to see all of these implications of idol idol worship. And I can't remember the blue god that kind of popped up. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the information, uh, he was on the platter, the quote-unquote platter, the tray that he popped up. Yes. And I know that he was a representation of a deity, right? I just, I can't remember his name. I do have his name somewhere, but I'll pull that up and talk to you about that. Now, these implications are strong. Mm-hmm. These implications are strong. Like you said, when we came in, we don't know whether or not they're trans. We don't know if they, if they were drag, but we know that they were men because one of them had an actual beard. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Indeed. So we know that they were men uh, depicting themselves or showing themselves as women and more specifically uh, in the role of uh, religion and faith. Yeah. And this was too much. My, 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 thing, my, my thing is, how, why? Why? What, 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 is, what, is, what is the fascination of, of delving into these scriptural um, it's connotations? Just a, it's, just, it's a mockery. That's all it could be. This is an a mockery. There's so many things that you could portray. And at this global stage, you want to poke at um, what Christians revere as a very sacred um, thing that happened. Um, and But honestly, there is a part of it that shows the ignorance of the world and also those unseen things because the, the Bible is very clear when it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Um, when, when you poke and make fun of something, that really is going to end very badly for those who don't embrace whom we call Jesus. Um, and you poke at it, so it's just saying, I don't care. Y'all can't do anything about it. This is what we had. And, and the truth is, like many, I hear many Christian commentators who, are, who have jumped on this. I was just listening between last night and this morning. Um, they are all saying the same sentiments, and you just said it earlier too. They would not do this to Islam. They can't. They could never. But it could, because when I talk about it not ending well for them, I'm talking about the end of days. But Islam, it would be like today, you would be paying for this. Your end of days is now. <laughs> it's now. It's correct. It's now. It's They're correct. not playing with you with yeah. this. You uh, know something? The only thing that I see is that uh, you, cla- you, ca- you cast your lot with, amongst the heathen. Mm-hmm. You put your lot in. You tie your, your talent, your seed in among the heathen. And the only mm-hmm. thing that comes to me is Matthew 10 and 33 that actually speaks to about the fact that if you deny me before men. Yeah. And because yes, I'm sir. looking at this, there's 206 nations represented here. And not yeah. one stood up and said, you know what? I get home. Okay, so now you, you jump in. The, I get home. You jump in, in the conversation with me and my son this morning. I'm dropping my son off. And it's so funny when you called to say, um, Devin, come, let's talk about this. I literally just was saying to my son, who's very athletic and, and could go in the next few years all sorts of places. Um, I said to him, I said, son, I don't know if, if I was to the Olympics and saw that opening, if I would be able to stay. I literally may have said, I'm sorry, team. I'm sorry, uh, coach. I can't do this. And, and that would have been my fight, seeing that level of insult. Um, there's there's a the former 100-meter record holder. Uh, this is like 40, 50 years ago. I'm told that he refused whenever the games, um, um, world events would happen on a Sunday, he would refuse to run. Uh, and, and I thought about that this morning too, the level of sacredness and reverence we had for certain things. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've gotten great revelation now and saying that your relationship with God is more important than a day. Yes, I understand all of that stuff. Um, however, when we, when we start to drop our, or change the, what the Bible says, old landmark, when we start to bring in the stakes and move the boundaries, all sort of things start come crumbling down when we do it. And I think we're in that day now where we have been so casual yeah. with our relationship with God that, and, and this is what another um, podcaster was saying this morning, we have insulted our own faith in the West. Yeah, We say we're Christian. We say we love God. We say we love Jesus. But the way we conduct ourselves, the way we, 
the, the, the way we give injury to our own faith, the, the, the movies we make insulting God, we use the name of Jesus as a curse word. Um, the things that South Park and, and, and all of the, even cartoons are making mockery of the crucifixion and we laugh a bit and we don't rebel against it. As a matter of fact, there was a movie insulting Jesus. And, and, and the one, Book of Clarence? I think that w- 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 what it the was. The Book of Clarence. And, and the Islam believers came and defended and said, this is wrong. But this is what's happening here. The Muslim believer the, is standing up and saying the Christians need to stand for something. <laughs> the Muslims are saying, my goodness, come on, man. This is your faith and you won't say nothing. Let me take a telephone call. Uh, guys, the lines are wide open. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere for the family of islands, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. Call on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, uh, good afternoon, Howard, and good, um, good afternoon, Ambassador. Good afternoon. How are you all doing? Hey, 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 what's up, Anton? All's well. We're good. Right here, man. Uh, good afternoon to the nation. Just listening to the conversation, I thought I'd make a, a quick, um, um, I guess, a comment or two before you all get into into the, the mix. I, I was thinking about this over the weekend myself, quite frankly, Howard, and Ambassador. Good afternoon to the nation. I was thinking about this very topic of conversation and looking at, well, I wasn't following what was happening over there in Paris, but I, I heard about it in, in, in passing conversation as well. And I, I got to thinking to myself, when you look at all of the happenings on the world stage, where in the Christian faith, you have persons who have fallen in the, in the sin of homosexuality, who are still being embraced in the very same positions that 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 at one time would be shunned upon in, in the strongest fashion, mm-hmm. but they're, they're 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 being embraced not not just locally but globally, right? In leading organizations of faith on the planet, and 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 there is this there is this um there is this weakening of the structure of Christianity and. And then when you look at what's happening with um, um with Hollywood, right? There's a further uh, deliberate act to introduce and normalize uh, this the the, the, the uh, certain lifestyles, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it was never it was never there before, but over the last I guess decades, two decades, it's it's coming on stronger and stronger. As ambassadors start to say, you you have to be very careful this day and age, even with your children. Or what? Oh, you, most definitely. What you consider to be most definitely. cartoon is not kid friendly. No, and it's mm-hmm. not acceptable. And so, Hollywood is even penetrated right down to persuading and influencing the minds of children, which, believe it or not, is very influential. Mm-hmm. Television and and music. Very influential, and then when you when you look locally, what is happening? I, I think I heard something with Guardian. It was last week, where some of the pastors who are part of the Christian Council was stating that in their interview with some of the signers of the Constitution, they stated emphatically the way Bahamians are perceiving the um, um the uh, the um, uh, preamble to the Constitution is incorrect because it was never intended to deny recognition of any other faith, et cetera, um, over Christianity. It was designed to do quite the opposite, to, to, to leave room, to welcome them all. And so, and, 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 and let, me, let, me, let, me, let me, before I surmise on that point, let me, let me just add. And when you look at how we spoke about this either last, I think it was last week, certainly week before last, but within the last two weeks, where I expressed one of the viewpoints that I appreciate um, uh, this was not me saying I, I support Republican or Democrat. It was simply me acknowledging that I appreciate this one factor about the Republicans, their conservatism, right? I truly appreciate their conservative approach over that of the Democrats, mm-hmm. where even in, in the free world in America, um, uh, where they have their rights to do whatever they wish within the confines of their constitution, they, they also seem to, if you recall what happened with the, um, the American embassy here, where the um, um, Bahamians had, had, an, had an outcry 
as and the agitation for the place. gay flag that was flying uh, uh, yeah. every June, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it didn't happen. It I didn't think happen, Cassius um, led that. Uh, this June. It happened last June, but didn't happen this June. And when you align something that you, either you are ambassador, I don't remember who said it, I was when you all said that, um, one of you all said that the, the CMS, though the pathway has been cleared for Kamala Harris, I said president that. To, uh, to, to ascend. To the presidency, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and and you look at the agendas that that go along with. with this heavy, Anton. This with heavy, which you say. I say this is heavy. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to paint a good spread in a short period of time for us <laughs> to appreciate how widespread this thing is. And when you look at the leading um, 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 power on the planet, and 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 what what is at stake, as they say, uh, but what is also at stake for persons around them. And, and the agendas that are being pushed. This is something that is so, so very serious, but it's, it's so very sacred to our own country. We have to be careful and, you know, we have a fight within our own borders where when one considers if there's this real situation that is being presented by members of the Christian Council that the, um, um, the original architects of the Constitution never intended to shun any other religion or, or whatever the case may be. And we take that into consideration with the fact that we are operating in a democracy, right? And what the democracy truly means, and on principle, yeah. it, 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 would, it would not be able to shun, in, in reality, any of those practices by others who don't support Christianity. The foundation. The foundation. Let me take a quick commercial break. Anton, to let you go so I, we can talk, be able to talk about these things. All right, guys, we take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after this. For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, De Gregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Now let me see now. 326 E-P-I-C. Hello? Hello? This this epic, epic battery? This Miss Bueller from around the corner. I hear you are selling tires now on Wolf Road 2. Praise the Lord. It's about time. I live Fox Hill and Fire Trail. It's too far. That ain't on. They open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Sunday and holiday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. My brother Sam, he's a hacker. And he could go right there and get fixed up. Call us at 326 Epic. We ship also to the family island. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant and your company live in the full effect, being able to talk about the things that we are. We're just talking about the Paris Olympics, the opening. And the implications thereof, Anton, you had some very good points uh, out there. I know, Ambassador, you share in those particular things. But uh, I think that we, from a global standpoint, are in for a rough ride. Can I say that? I think so. If we're looking at what's happening out of the West, if we're looking at America, if we're looking at, listen to me, there are governors, there are officials indicating that if Donald Trump doesn't win, the only way that we could fix America, I don't know if you heard this, The oh, I think... Oh, man, i got to get the governor's name. Uh, the only way that we could fix America mm-hmm. is with a civil war. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That they would actually say this out loud? Yeah. That the only way that we could rectify an issue is through blood. Yeah. Yeah. That, listen to me, 
that threat has been hanging over America now. But it ain't a threat no more because January 6th has already shown us that they're willing to take a chance. <sighs> this is too much. I tell you, listen to me. I just um, want to be decent with you. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to be decent with you. If we're looking at a global standpoint, if we're looking at not only the physical and the signs of the time, uh, the sky and the, 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 the sun and the stars and so forth that was given for the signs of the time that we're in, and we're seeing that the weather is shifting and we're watching these things from mm -hmm. a global standpoint. You ain't got to get crazy and religious. Mm -hmm. But if you understand that there is a shift about, if you just take your time and separate, you could recognize and feel this thing in your spirit also. There's something mm -hmm. afoot. There's something afoot here that feels a little different than we've ever felt before. We didn't feel this way with Kerry. We didn't feel this way with Bush, even though uh, our 44 won't go to every war in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though 44 won't tell you, say, uh, uh, fool me once, uh, 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 you can't be, fool me once, uh, it's, a, it's a saying in Texas, uh, 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 you can't get fooled again. Even though he won't go to every war in the world, we didn't have the sentiment. Yeah. Even with 9-11, we didn't have the sentiment. Even with the existence of anthrax and all these things that was happening in the United States of America, we didn't have the sentiment. We didn't have this feeling from a global standpoint. No matter what was happening the other day with Russia, and uh, there's sort of a fight that existed in this particular space mm -hmm. to see whether or not we could find ourselves unified in the USSR again. We did not have this sentiment. But today, with the implications of what we're seeing from a global standpoint and the relentless push for this agenda to be placed in our living rooms. Come on, man, talk to me about this, right? In our living rooms and then take on this kind of a position. What's this we're looking at? Happening right now in Paris. Ooh. Christians are standing up. My God, I must see God. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Happening right now yes, in sir. Paris. Yep. Happening right now in Paris. Christians are standing up. I think it's time for us to be, 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 be able to do these things. Somebody yes, just sir. send this to you, eh? Yep. So just, let's be able to look at this thing. Me. Let me see if I can look at this one more time. Happening right now. Jesus flooding the streets and uh, praising his name. <laughs> on this particular day. This is exciting things to yes, be able sir. to see. Guys, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to have this kind of a conversation with you. I don't know where you are. I don't know where your mind is. I don't know whether or not you're so, if you're so consumed with what's happening out there as it relates to your job and what's going to happen tomorrow and concerning yourself about future events and how you could be able to financially stay, uh, uh, ensure that you're stable and whether or not you have a good representation in the world and all the, I don't know what you're looking at. Can I, can I, can but if I, you're looking at faith, what you're looking at, go, go ahead. Go and ahead I, I, and I, I'm, I'm tagging into what you're saying. If, because I know there's some people that are, you, you got, you probably have a very sharply split audience of people who love you because of your stance and your faith and your boldness with it. And then others like, why, why, how I don't just separate all of this spirituality from what he's doing, right? Because, because they love your political analysis. They love your social awareness, but they probably get irked in their skin every time you go to spirituality. However, I had a flashback just now, and I was sitting in the same room about 12 years ago, and I said to the nation that we are in a crossroad where we have to decide who we are as a nation, spiritually um, and philosophically, because the world is about to go through a big clash. But we haven't decided. No, we have not. We have not. Now, we're still, you, we're still deep with this. We're, we're, I'm going Some 12 years ago, if I could remember... Uh -huh. Let me let me let me see if I can do the math. Um, which this which, what are we in? Twenty four minus ten forty two is two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve to two thousand seventeen, the POP was in, and two thousand twelve. And it was right before that election that I came on the air here, right but before the election. By that time, by this time, there was a contrast, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs had already taken on a very strong position and being able to claim and exclaim to the nation that we have to take on worldviews, that if we are seeking to ascend, we must take on worldviews. This is what I, I just well, you, you, this is, this Your memory is, is very good, Howard. Yeah, yeah, I have to, <laughs> but if you remember, before, yeah. before, uh, before Miles Monroe actually passed away, oh my goodness. the issue between him, and it was an issue between him and the minister more specifically, it was. right? Yeah. Uh, I think that this is when they went to people, the Vatican. Now, people would think we planned this conversation. No, no. This is, this is when, before they went to the Vatican. Live in the moment, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. It's before they went to the Vatican, before yeah. our prime minister yeah. of the time kissed the ring yeah. of, of... Come on, let's just be very clear. 
before our prime minister traveled to another land to go kiss the ring and the sovereignty of our country existed here. My God, I just won't be decent. Then they came back with this concept and idea that we must amalgamate and align ourselves with worldviews. If you world remember, views. do you remember this? I remember clearly. You remember this? Yes, I do. Now we, because I didn't understand what, what worldviews meant. I ain't gonna lie to you, I can tell you mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. Worldviews from my vantage point and my understanding and the education that, that, I, uh, that I give to these men, and mm -hmm. I say that they are very smart men. Oh, yeah. Indeed, right? indeed. And I say, okay, so they have to be doing the right thing yeah. for our country. Yeah. And so when they come back and they start to have this kind of a conversation about worldviews, it says to me that this is a technological standpoint of a progressing world. Yeah. And the, and the importance of being able yeah. to align ourselves yeah. that technology so needs that to come in. Progressive. I never thought spirituality. <laughs> I never thought one day ever yeah. that we have to align ourselves with the concepts and ideas of the spiritual things that's being yeah. released on that side. And yeah. accept that. I never yeah. thought that. But today it is so, clear. It's very clear. It's very clear. It is clear. It is very clear. Um, and, and God, through the forum, before certain things happen, he always reveals what's happening through his true prophets. Now, now people want to hear prophets come and talk about your car, your house, your, last, that car. your, your <laughs> last name. <laughs> Uh, and what's about to happen for you in, materialistically. But true prophecy is going to speak to aligning oneself with God and what he desires to happen. And and we, we've been playing with it. So while we've, been, while we've been trying to be desensitize everybody to spirituality and the role that it plays in global affairs... What watch what's happening? Watch what's happening in the media. The media, the media doesn't downplay spirituality. No, if you if you watch carefully, all these movies with these demonic characters that are leading, all of these little signage, signage and imagery in the movies are coming very spiritual. But they're saying to you who believe in the one true God, who believe in the Christian faith, uh, y'all are emotional, y'all are y'all are not relevant. It's garbage because when when God comes according to proper scriptural um, exegesis, he is coming to see which nation aligns itself with being a goat nation or a sheep nation. So when people talk the nonsense that you have to um, toe the line to, in order to be progressive and relevant as a nation, it is garbology at the highest level. Garbology. I love it. Let me take a telephone call. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're, live in a full, uh, you're live on the show. Give us a call. Go ahead. Oh, Grant. Hey. Good day, good day. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. What's happening? Very good topic this morning. I just want to find out which side you will land on, Republican or Democrat side, uh, that, because, of your, because of your religious belief. Um, I can say this. I, I can, I'm not going to say, <laughs> no, let, me, let me be decent. I have to be decent with you. I have to be decent with you. Because I'm not going to say Republican or Democrat because I'm not an American <laughs> citizen. I'm a behemoth. Yeah. But I will say to you, either conservative or liberal, all right? I can say okay. to you, conservative or liberal, I am I, I'm conservative. In well, my if you're beliefs. conservative, you, you fall right on the Republican side. Well, I don't know no, where you're placing me, leader. I'm not going to fight no you. Who's the leader? At the Republican side, if you're conservative. I correct? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I just think this, <laughs> this, it's hard for me to say this because we know that the helm of the conservative uh, party uh, the head of the GOP right now is Donald Trump, who is vying for the position for uh, president of the United States of America. Exactly. And, and I believe that uh, I don't I don't agree with a lot of his sentiments and whatnot. But a lot of persons out of this 161 uh, million Caucasians, they have almost uh, idealized him and indicated that he is sent by God. I think this is too much. <laughs> I think but this hey, is but too if much. you go on the Democratic side, that you voted for them, them things, man. I'm saying it's on the other side of the See, water. I don't know when we can start to have a very clear conversation. And the lines are lit up, man. I appreciate your telephone call. Thank yes, you so sir. much. Thank you so much, right? I don't know when we can have a very clear conversation about what's being happening. I mean, but, but, Kamala but, Harris but, in a particular capacity. I, I mean, should we say this? Kamala Harris in a particular capacity has been able to uh, go around and almost uh, vie for a position of how things are happening, right? Even in Africa, even in other nations, there is an agenda <laughs> afoot. Yes. And ain't nobody see it thing pronounced. Even when uh, uh, Obama was in the White House, the entire White House was spread with the flag. Do you remember these things? There is an agenda afoot. And this kind of a liberty takes me away from my conviction and my position anchored in faith. It is hard for me to say that I agree with this, but I don't. Right. 
It's hard. Right. How are we going to have this conversation right. without being able to step on some toes? Mm -hmm. But when it's very clear that those persons, the coordinators for the Olympics, were not afraid to step on the Christian's toes, but we are the ones that walk gingerly to ensure yeah. that we don't offend anyone else. Mm -hmm. But we take a slap to the face. Are we, at this juncture, supposed to turn the other cheek? Right. Let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when are we going to receive apologies for the offenses that come against us? We're wrong for calling out certain things. You're, you're backward. You're irrelevant. You're holding on to tradition when you speak what the Bible says today about integrity, about holiness, about equity. Uh, just shut up. Go in, your, go in your little building and have your little service and, and come, out, come outside the doors and be quiet and don't speak to anything. Yet, offenses like this can happen and we're supposed to just take it and not even speak to it, and I think it's wrong. It's, it speaks. Um, somebody has a, a, a controlling, manipulative spirit, and I don't believe it's the true believer. Mm -hmm. um, and um, to speak to the American situation, I, I wanted to say this. This is what I'll say without aligning myself outrightly. I think one anybody American listeners out there, because this this station has global reach, and yeah. I'm sure many who are yeah. from outside of the country are right in here listening. Yes. Um, I believe persons should be encouraged to vote according to the principles, to what they believe spiritually, what they believe philosophically. And and a lot of people will say, if you choose the side that's conservative, then they'll go immediately to point out character flaws in the people who lead. Point out one human being, however, who doesn't have character flaws. We all do. The, the thing is, you must, you must realize, however, that throughout history and throughout the Bible, God has the prerogative to use whomsoever he decides to use. The fact that God uses you, however, don't mean that you rightly or righteous align with him or even that you go to heaven. But God chooses whom who will come in and into alignment with what his will is and what his desire is. And I think when we see the the evident signs that this is going in the direction that God favors, then I think we should toe the line in that regards. Being very balanced, using wisdom, using discernment, and being able to say, okay, that is wrong. And this is a crazy thing. It's like you're evil if you say to somebody, what you're doing there is wrong, or what you just said there is wrong. Don't you see how, how witchcraft and nation that is? If, if we friends, Howard, I should be able to say, Howard, boy, you said that just now, but that really hurt my feelings. And, and we worked that out, and we're still friends. But I spoke truth to you. Do, you. do you call me evil because I speak truth? Well, that's what happens in these particular states. It's time for us to be able to be clear and uh, stop, so, stop being so easily offended and have a very clear conversation. I yeah. think that a lot of us are easily offended yep. by these things. Yep. And it's time for us to have a clear conversation. I got one more call on the line. Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. 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 I'm listening to what you all are talking about when it comes to uh, Christianity, right? Yes, ma'am. And uh, I, I remembered... Uh, St. Augustine said that there was Christianity before in Africa. They said it was Christianity before this modern-day Christianity, before Constantine uh, put the Romans together and the uh, Christians of the new, the Christians in those times. Because the Christians of those times, nobody took them seriously. The only, uh, to me, Christianity was like a polit political thing. And so he brought his people together. He brought those them together so Rome wouldn't be destroyed, wouldn't just break up. I'm talking a layman's term now. Right. And so when that happened and all the Christians got together and he actually uh, baptized his soldiers and baptized them, all the politicians and everything, it was really politics. It was, and it was, either you do this, what I tell you to do, or you die. Mm -hmm. So it was, so Christianity wasn't some, wasn't a thing that most people in those days actually uh, was, uh, they conformed to it. It wasn't in their heart. They did it because of political reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, this Greco-Roman, uh, that was Greco-Roman uh, politics or Christianity. Now what's happening is that I don't think back then, it wasn't for us here in this world. It was for, it was for the, I'm going to call them European people then because it's in modern time. And so they're rules, Europeans now. So that was for those Europeans. Uh, for them to get together. I don't think that they really meant for us here in this world to be Christians and to take it so, so seriously as we did. 
because there were homosexuals back then. There were all of those things that they had. All of those gods that they were talking about, they had those things there. And that's what they believed in. So now these people are coming back and they're waking up and they're remembering and they want what they want. They want to be free to worship who they want. They want to, and they're, so essentially, their politics. Essentially, they are lovers of themselves. We don't, if we don't tell ourselves, you know something, this is what we stand for. And nobody in hardly in this Western world is going to be dying for Christianity. Not like how the Protestants back then used to die for it. We're not going to die for that. All we, we're just like what they want us to be. We are politicians wanting to grab whatever we want. So you can talk as much as you want to talk. You have to ask yourself this question. The two of all of you all who are talking about so sincerely about Christianity, would you die for Christianity? Would you, would you starve? Would, would, would I do this? You have to make up your mind what you would do. And if you're not that sort of person, you, you're just what the Greco-Romans want. I appreciate oh, your telephone call. I, I won't touch this. Let me touch this for two seconds. We die to ourselves daily in Christianity, in our faith, in our commitment. When we identify our posture and our position, if you're having a conversation of what existed prior and being able to look at ourselves now, you're not taking into account that the death that people suffered in yesteryear might have been with their physical lives. But the death that we suffer right now, that people are afraid to get into politics, they're afraid to be able to speak up, they're afraid to show themselves, is an economic death. And she, it's the same, it's, it's death. Is she still there? No, she got, she, she's okay, I, I, I was kind of confused just now trying to follow what was her argument. Essentially what um, she was saying, what I gathered from her, is that before the introduction of Christianity, there was a faith that these people carried, a right. conviction that they carried, an right. idea, an ideology. Right. There is a there is a commitment that they had to whatever deity that they served on right. the spaces that they were. Right. That Christianity was only supposed to be identify and concentrate in a European space, not necessarily go ye into all the world and become this. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand what she's saying. It sounds like she's devoid <laughs> of what we read in the word of God. So let's right. just be decent about this. And I, I think she's mixing it too. The, I mean, because we, we use the term Christi, Christian and Christianity because the world recognizes it as, as the sect of people who believe in God and his son Jesus. <clears throat> However, of course, we know that Christians were first called Christians in Antioch and it was really meant to mock them but, and, because they were considered Christ followers. Um, and so, honestly, if we're going to mock me by calling me a Christ follower, and to me that's a compliment, and, and I take it. But you have to break down Christianity or the faith of, of believing in God to the nitty-gritty and what it really means. It means that you have, one, repented of your sins. You have asked God, you, you say to God that I believe that you sent your son to die in my place, and you ask him into your heart, and then the journey of living the way he lived begins through the empowerment of his Holy Spirit. I mean, we have to go a little deep, a little deep and talk about what's happening because she went into Constantine and his strategy of combining Christianity with a lot of the idol worship and belief at the time. And that's causing a lot of confusion to this day. That's why Revelation has come now and we are pushing people get into the word of God for yourself and get a true relationship with God so that you truly reflect the image of Christ and not what is political, not what is media celebrated or distorted. That's the best I can say right now. Let me take this quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. I see your telephone calls. We'll be, be right back after this. The Foundation. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Bonneville Bones, established in 1970, is the leader in men's fashion in the Bahamas. We're conveniently located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza, and fully stocked with everything you need for all occasions. Our Harbor Bay location is one door north of Alive, with the black and white signage of Bonneville Boutique. Both locations are open from 10 to 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Bonneville Bones and Bonneville Boutique 
still the leader in men's fashion. Located in the mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza. Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store wants to get you ready for back to school. No fools, school. They have ready-made uniforms and uniform fabrics for almost every school in the Bahamas. At Carrie's, find skirts, blouses, shirts, jumpers, boy shorts and long pants, neckties, socks and more. You can even have your uniform skirts custom made. Check out our selection of embroidered cotton shirts. That's Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store on Mackey Street. Call, Call us at 393-0758 or 817-0758. The Guardian Media Group has your ticket to Paris. On your marks, get set. Join the Guardian Media Group, Star 106 Hits, Guardian Radio 96.9, and Hot 91 FM. And follow Team Bahamas from Paradise to Paris. Live comprehensive updates on Team Bahamas every day during the 2024 Summer Olympics. We are your ticket to Paris. Nassau Guardian Sports Editor Sheldon Longley will be trackside, bringing you closest to our athletes in their quest for gold. From Paradise to Paris. The 2024 Summer Olympics live updates brought to you by gold sponsors, the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, Jimmy Wines and Spirits, distributors of Refreshing Sands Beer, Silver Sponsor Executive Motors, and the Bronze Sponsors, Hertz Renter Car, Magico Insurance, Bay Street Garage, Nassau Motors, your Chevy and Honda dealers, and New Life Natural. Let the games begin. Uh, Stephen Gardner alongside 100 meter hurdler Devin Charlton. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation. I see the lines are lit right up. I got a couple minutes before we can get out of here. Uh, I can give you guys uh, maybe about a minute. Let me see if I can take a telephone call. We're sitting here with none other than Ambassador Devin Rowe, just being able to have conversations about what's happening in the Olympics, what's happening and the implication thereof, what's happening from a global standpoint, and really whether or not we're convicted enough to make a decision and stand for something. That's one of the things that we've been pushing on this show, that leadership should always have conviction. We've seen Team Bahamas uh, out of this Christian nation, all of us who share in this kind of Christianity and this faith, stand there and stand steadfast and celebrate the fact that they're participating in this darkness. Come on, I just want to be decent as they say this, right? And whether or not we separate the dark from uh, the activity and the responsibility, the reason why we're there, we're still not being able to dive deep enough for this, in my view, and just being able to talk about these things. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the Family Violence 242-300-5720. Hit me up on the text uh, 242-422-4796. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hey, Howard. Good day. Hey, good day, my dear. What's up there with you? Hey, Brian. Thank you. I ain't Listen, hear you in a little while. I hope you're good. I'm, I'm great, actually. I was doing a little bit of traveling. See, oh, trying to get like you. Praise Jesus. Trying to see if I could reach Hong Kong. But Don't go to China. You you <laughs> Don't stay there, but Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, question. Um... Have there ever been a time in history where the, there was a Christian uprising? Yes. Historically, there have been. Many. How recent? Uh, the most recent Christian uprising. Um, I don't know. I mean, I got to think about exactly. that. I got to think exactly. about that. Exactly. Because if you look if, at the... If, depending on where we were. If, if I was in Alabama having this conversation with you right now, I would say January 6th. <laughs> really, Howard? <laughs> Go ahead. Understandable. But if you look at it, um, look at the Muslim. They would fight tooth and nail for what they believe in. I think um, being Christian, our religion taught us to be passive, to be forgiving, mm -hmm. to be understanding. And we try that 
to the point where they push in all type of agenda on us and we just roll over and say, you know, we in the world but we're not of the world type of way. Mm-hmm. So we have now the Muslims are speaking up for us. What happened to our voice? Wow. Well, I believe, and I appreciate your telephone call. These lines are lit right up. Thank you so much, my dear. Uh, I believe in seasons and times. And I believe that uh, if uh, the comforter who is here and also the educator, the teacher, who is here in the form of the Holy Spirit that is guiding our steps and taking us to the purpose that God has called us to, that we should have the discernment and understanding of the season and the time that we're in. There has been significant aggression uh, of when uh, things would happen in terms of being able to move forward and you're fighting for a particular position, whether that was uh, the army of God or whether that's a posture where Stephen has taken and becoming a martyr in these particular stands. If you identify these things. The, the passive approach of the believer in terms of not engaging in physical fights willy-nilly is the attempt of the believer today in following the model that Jesus said. Peter had his, his sword. He cut off the cut fellow's off the hair. Jesus says, Peter, if you live by this sword, you're going to die by the sword. That's not the way we go in. He puts the air back on so as to cancel the, the fight that Peter was about to start. We are honest that the weapons of our warfare as believers are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, right. which means our go-to is not the sword or the gun. Our, our go-to are our spiritual weapons, our prayer, our declaration, our prophetic utterances, the way we live. This is the revelation that we've gotten when we look at how Jesus Christ lived. Now, we've had generations, centuries of poor representation of what it means yes. to be Christian yes. because we mixed our carnal emotions in the way we carried out the gospel. We were advancing the gospel, even killing people, so you must worship the way we are. That's not truly Christian. That's not the model that Christ set. So now we are, we are seeking to live in the, in the true understanding and revelation that we have. Now, uh, what we are at fault at is there are times when we should speak truth to power and we do not speak because of our passivity and because, and it's really in that sense is not really even being passive it's really being a coward we don't want to speak up because the truth is we're supposed to be ready to die for what we believe Stephen could have said at any moment yeah. I don't believe in this Jesus no more and they would have stopped stoning him like but Peter, he chooses Peter just three times before the cock thank, thank you very much I he, don't know Jesus he is. chose to embrace the rocks and die and before he died he said I see Jesus sitting on the right hand of the father so truthfully we're supposed to be willing to die for what we believe Think about all those Christians who lost their heads just a few years ago before the same Trump that everybody wants to highlight all of his flaws stopped ISIS from progressing um, from where they were in, in, in the East. They were killing Christians day in and day and day out. And I'm telling you, that movement was going to come to the West because one of the most prominent um, ISIS um, persons was a guy who left America and joined them. I can't, I can't remember his name right now. But I'm saying... Revelation and understanding is progressive. And those of us who are trying our, our best to live the way Jesus lived. it's the same God who says, vengeance is mine. That's what he tells us. Said, said That's the what Lord. he tells us. Yes, sir. Right? Vengeance is mine. Yes, sir. Right? And, 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 and we're finding ourselves in this sort of a position, believing that our two hands that should be clasped in prayer and a commitment to kind of move forward should yeah. be used to be able yeah. to strangle someone. Yeah. I don't know whether or not this is the faith that we that we carry. Yeah. This is not the faith that we have. And, and whilst we've seen representation Presentation and other religion concepts that exist the world over, we take, and, and this is why I know that a lot of people, they carry the name of Christian, but they're reading the word. Right. They're reading and understanding, absorbing, and there's no transformation yeah. in their mind and their spirit as it relates to the yeah. path that you should take. Yeah. Because whilst we should study to show ourselves approved, yes. we still have to be anchored in our faith. Yes. And, and, and then too, and I hope the your producers listen to this, there are levels to this growth process of being a Christian. Somebody, somebody who says they're a Christian today may have just gotten saved yesterday. They haven't studied. They haven't been mentored. They haven't been discipled. They have the so, milk. So, so their knowledge is limited. Yes. And, so, and, and that's why the love of Christ through us allows for people to grow. That's, it's, it's called grace. We have grace for your mistakes, grace for your misunderstanding. Uh, and our hope is... Even if you fall 70 times 7. E- even if you fall 70 times 7. That's, that's how loving God is because when... 
Listen to the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever, who did God love? The world. He didn't say he loved Christians. He loves everybody, and the intent is for everybody to get in so that we can live forever. Mm -hmm. We are living to live again. Yeah. Let me take a next telephone call. Call on the line. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, with Devin. Hey, hey. what's up, man? I glad they ever said that the vengeance is mine, says the Lord, right? And then before that, he, he sent his own people to, to destroy a, a city and then kill everybody and all the animals and don't keep none. Mm -hmm. Correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at um, um, the Bible, the complete Bible, mm -hmm. not, not, uh, not, not what, they, what they present to us after the, the conclave or... Whatever with uh nice with the scene. guy, the gentleman mm -hmm. name who you were talking about just a few minutes Constantine. ago. Constantine. 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 You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do do you guys did you guys read the the complete the whole thing with with all those the chapters that they they took out of it? I read some of the chapters. I read some, some of the books. Some. I didn't read all the books. Uh -huh. I read some of the I, books. I, you you know because it looked like a, a imaginary story or something, right? Um, like a dream, a dream kind of. Well, yes, but this is why we studied the show ourselves approved to come back exactly. to understand something. I, I, I really feel that when we were in slavery and all that, we were, we were passive. They used that to, to pass, 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 pacify us. You understand? To make us weaker. You understand? Because when they take us from Africa, there were a lot of warring tribes and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. so they say, oh, turn, uh, turn the other cheek, do this and do that so they could make you more submissive. You understand wow. all that fighting and thing? Because listen, in the in the in the new in the Old Testament, God tell them do this, destroy this place, and that place get destroyed. Not a child, not a dog, not a cat, not nothing was living in that place. Mm -hmm. After the after the God's people go there and attack that place and take it over. You understand? So it's, it's a lot of contradictory stuff. Well, I don't know if it's the contradictory. Bible. There's a clear path, almost like, uh, and I appreciate your telephone call, my brother. I got one more telephone call before we get here. I don't know if it's contradiction. The Old Testament is uh, is law, <laughs> and the law is strong, right? The Old Testament is law. You're teaching good, Howard. Go ahead. All right? And then we know that the veil was, was torn, mm -hmm. and grace was introduced. I, I, I don't want to get too heavy and preachy. Go ahead. That's what you're doing. You're doing extremely well. I appreciate I, you. I, I, Take I, the I, call I, next I, time. <laughs> I, I didn't want to, want to expand on the notion of law. Law means you either, and ignorance of the law is no excuse, by the way, too, as a principle. So the law means you follow these instructions or you get these consequences. That's, that, that's the dispensation it was. We are thankfully now in the dispensation of grace thanks to the sacrifice of the man called Christ. That's it. Let me read a couple of these texts before we get out of here. It's a blatant lie that Islamic nations only promote Islam. In Palestine, Syria, Egypt, Lebanon, Iran, there are Christian and Jews and all other religions living in them. Western's media create a narrative to sway public opinion and influence weak minds in believing that there is a war among religions because we are, fe we are fed, I suppose, fed up with American propaganda that is all we know. This is, uh, I'm sorry, we are fed American propaganda. That's all we know. This text is coming through. So this is uh, passive Christianity. Ha, ha, ha. Crusade and slavery. This is, uh, text is coming through. So it says, good day, sir. It says, I did not see the image. What I have heard, it was disrespectful. We must condemn this action fully. Demonic it is. And God would not deal with the persons who did this? Amen. Right? They said God would deal with the persons who did this. Is Howard. Uh, if the LGBTQ did disrespect Muhammad or Allah, trust me, France was going to burn. This is a text is coming through. This just won't be decent. This is a text is coming through, but I agree with what they said, right? This is, this is, tell my good friend, our head boy and brother, Ambassador Devin Roll, to keep up the great works he's doing this. It's his good friend, Aldo. Oh, wow. Hey, and, Aldo. And his 1992 CH Reeve Rebels yes, classmate, <laughs> they listening to you. They want to send you the whole shout out to the whole class Aldo. and everything. Go My God, you need to stop. <laughs> this is good afternoon, Howard. Uh, and guests in the Bahamas, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, our leaders and the Bahamian people must make it known to the world that while we love and appreciate them as a nation and a people. We are surely do not love them more than we love our Lord and Savior. It's Christ. This is Texas coming through. He says, the Bahamas <laughs> need to make it stand, make it stand now yes. and not wait for something else to take place. Yeah. 
It's the text is coming through. All right? Uh, just saying Republican. Just say Republican, Howard. I, I cannot say Republican, <laughs> right? Just, that's like you calling me, say, Howard, just say FNM. I'm not an FNM. I'm not a PLP. It's a decent Bahamian man who will decide upon the day Indeed. when the election is called. You don't need to stop, right? <laughs> so the official, the official account of the Olympic Games said that the social media platform X, uh, that is the scene where the blueprint, the blue painted man, the France actor and the singer, uh, Philippi, was the uh, interpretation of Dionysus. That's what they said. It says Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and revelry, was the, uh, which makes us aware of the absurdity of the violence between human beings. This is this is a text that's coming through, right? But I just want to be able to thank you, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so very kindly. Can I get to you no more of your telephone calls on the show today? I want to thank you, uh, Ambassador Devin Rowe, for being able to be here with us today. This is 